Bourbon is such a special product because it is part of Kentucky's culture. It is part of Kentucky's history. The two are so intertwined that most people don't realize how important bourbon has been to the Commonwealth. And when you travel around the world and you say Kentucky, they're, they're, people are going to think of a couple of things. And believe it or not, it's not basketball. It's bourbon and horses. And we know, of course, the great contribution that Colonel Sanders gave to the world. So we are Kentucky around the world. The history of Woodford Reserve and the history of the Woodford Reserve Distillery are, a, are an interesting combination. The distillery is quite old, it's quite historic, and the Woodford Reserve brand is a very new uh, interpretation or reinterpretation of bourbon that dates back all the way to 1996. So the story begins in 1812 when the Pepper family moves here from Bourbon County, of course, and starts distilling on Glens Creek at what is now known as the Pepper Spring. The spring is what brought them here. Well, the second generation of the Pepper family built our current distillery in 1838, and that was Oscar Pepper. And he named the distillery after himself, the old Oscar Pepper Distillery. His distiller was James Christopher Crow, the famous old crow, the namesake of the brand. And it was the combination of crow and pepper who created modern bourbon as we know it today, using new charred oak barrels, using the sire mash process. Every history book gives them credit for creating the product we know today as bourbon whiskey. Well, the third generation of the Pepper family, James E. Pepper, sold the distillery in 1878 to what we would call a distributor now, but it's a company called LeBron and Graham. And LeBron and Graham runs the distillery up until Prohibition, close, reopen after Prohibition, and in 1941, sells to our parent company, Brown Foreman. 1959, the world is changing. Bourbon sales are going into a slump, which ends up being a long decline. And Brown Foreman closes the distillery, removes equipment, barrels of bourbon, and allows the property to sit. And in 1971, we sold the property to a neighboring farmer because the distillery sat in the midst of a 500 acre farm. And in the late 1980s, imported spirits at very high prices were becoming popular with the American consumer. And Brown Pullman decided to enter that business, but enter it in the best way we knew possible, in the bourbon business. And we decided to create a new super premium bourbon whiskey, and that began the Wood Reserve project. So we bought the site back from the same farmer's family, and we began the restoration of the buildings, and the beginning of the five sources of flavor concept. How would we make this new bourbon that had no name, that had no image, that had no personality? We were starting from scratch. We're real proud that when a visitor comes to the Whiff Reserve Distillery, they're literally going to see and experience the entire bourbon making process and how each of the five sources of flavor, five processes we follow, have an impact on the final product what the grain recipe brings to Wood Preserve, the spiciness of the rye, how our wonderful limestone water with its micronutrients and minerality is gonna bring floral notes to Wood Preserve. Our extra long fermentation process with our unique strain of yeast will add floral notes, and then we will capture the spicy floral and fruit notes by triple distilling in our unique copper pot stills, and then the spirit will be entered into the fifth and really the most important source of flavor, maturation, and our own custom crafted new charred oak barrels for that long period of time in our warehouse. So it's hard to imagine when we were renovating this historic site, this room, this building was empty. It was just four walls. So everything here we put in, Brown Foreman put in specifically to craft with reserve. And I think one of the great ironies of our story is to make this contemporary bourbon it had never existed before until 1996. We decided to turn the clock back and use old fashioned equipment. We could have put in stainless fermenters, stainless steel, that would have been smart. But instead we put in red cypress, old style fermenters. Why? Because that's what Crow and Pepper had. They didn't have steel. So these look very old, they're actually quite new. They have just aged and we will cook our mash, the corn, rye, and malted barley with our limestone water, fill a fermenter, add our unique strain of yeast, 
and six days later, we have the beginnings of Woodford Reserve. It's called Distiller's Beer. It's about 10% alcohol. It's up to the stills to separate the alcohol and the flavors we want from the grain, the water, and the spent yeast. So it's now from mash to distiller's beer, and then from distiller's beer to spirit in the still house. And the use of copper pot stills is very appropriate because we know in 1825 that Pepper Distillery had six pot stills. And we actually had these stills crafted for us in Scotland. So the largest of the stills is the beer still, and that takes the fermented mash, the grain, the water, the yeast, and the spirit all together, and the spirit's driven off and collected. That spirit is called low wine. When we've collected enough low wine, we will charge, in other words, fill the middle still, which is appropriately called the high wine still because we'll redistill the low wine into high wine removing some water, removing some alcohols that have characteristics we don't want, and end up with approximately 110 proof spirit. It's higher than the original proof. That spirit will be transferred to the third still, the spirit still, where the final product will be crafted. And from there, it will go into a holding tank. All we will do is add pure water to it, and then into barrel it will go. Now the spirit safe is the actual control panel. There are no computers running the Woodford Reserve Distillery. Everything is done in this spirit safe, just as it was in the 1800s. So the spirit will end up over here in our filling station, where we will fill each barrel by hand, one at a time. And bourbon cannot be entered into a barrel at over 125 uh, proof and we enter at a relatively low 110 proof. And we do that for flavor. If we entered the barrel at 125 proof, we would use 14% less barrels. So in other words, we are putting more wood in the Woodford Reserve by adding that little bit of water prior to barreling. So we have a lot more wood exposure, and since the, the wood, the, the maturation cycle, is the reason for all of our color, and 50 to 60% of our flavor and aroma, we just think it's important to have more barrel exposure. When you fill the barrel, we're gonna fill it completely full, no head space, no air gap. Within a day, we will have lost three to four gallons of spirit. The wood will absorb the spirit and we'll have head space now. The head space will just continue to grow over the years as a process we know is the angel share process advances because the barrel's wood it breathes it's not stainless steel or plastic or glass it's wood alcohol and water vapor leave air enters the barrel which creates a series of natural reactions that create more flavor so the angel share process is vital to the maturation of our great whiskey it comes at a cost the longer you go the less you have and typically, at the end of seven years, a wood reserve barrel will have lost approximately 45 to 50% of its original content. But we, again, believe it's worth it because the resulting spirit is, is rich and concentrated and balanced and nuanced, as you, as you can imagine. The question of how much do we make is, again, is a great team effort. We go out into the field from country to country, from state to state, wherever Wood Reserve is sold, and we ask our local salespeople, how much do you need over the next 10 years? And we constantly update that prediction, that forecast. And we roll it up, and we make what they predict, and hopefully we're in equilibrium with what they, they thought, and uh, that's how we do it. And we are now constructing more warehouses on the other side of Glens Creek because of the expansion of bourbon around the world and the success of Whiff Reserve. And we're adding another 165,000 barrel spaces. So we are confident and preparing for that future, that forecast we were talking about. We're, we're very bullish on Whiff Reserve. So that's the, that's the great news.